Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Loving Waters. And thank you, Seven Days of Rest 2020, for offering us this opportunity to share with the world the love we have for water. I'm Charlie Riverman Bergeron, and I'm here on day six, day of envision. And I chose this day so that we could envision our liquidity. And we'll deepen into that as we gather and align with each other's hearts. So I see a couple people coming on um, and I'll wait just a moment to uh, begin. I wanna thank you all for all that each one of you do for the waters in your own neighborhood. And it's so important now for all of us to gather around the waters and really deepen into what they might have to express to us. So I'll begin. Envision our liquidity. What does that mean? What does liquidity have to do with diversity, which is the main theme of the seven days of rest 2020? Liquidity is our created, creative gift to change forms and abilities in all circumstances we encounter. Envision, the word envision, I like to play with the words from the dictionary sense, is to think, conceive, imagine, fancy, realize. Those are the definitions of envision. Shelley Ostroff on today's page on seven days of rest wrote this message, envision, which I'd love to read to you. With your imagination, reach out into the best of all possible futures. Connect with the essence of that future that will be most vitalizing. Connect with the essence of that future that will be most vitalizing and for the core of your being as well as for the whole planet. And for the infinite universes of which you are a part. For the infinite universes of which you are a part. Welcome that vibration into every cell of your being Allow it to see within you and beyond you. Ask it to become the compass for all your actions and become conscious of your own well-being. It's intricately in, in, in <laughs> connected with the well-being of the all aspects of creation. So we learn to co-create health and vitality for the planet and all its inhabitants. You'll have to forgive my glasses as I read my notes. Uh, vision is a, a precious thing in this world of our envisioning liquidity. But the envisioning I'm really talking about is the envisioning with your heart. And I also want to talk about embracing liquidity not just envisioning it, but embracing liquidity. So embracing is carrying, comprehending, containing, encompassing, taking in. The word our relates, is about relating to us as agents. We become the agents of liquidity. And liquidity itself is defined as flowing freely like water. Deepen into that, flowing freely 
like water. As I began my notes this morning, uh, thinking about this and processing all that was coming through to bring forth for you, uh, I was surprised by a quote that posted popped up on my computer screen from Leo Bascalia, a person I think he taught Love 101 probably 40 years ago, a man who I just admired immensely with his ability at that time to really tap into love and express it for us to um, understand at a different level. And the quote was this, love yourself, accept yourself, forgive yourself, and be good to yourself. Because without you, the rest of us are without a source of many wonderful things. This represents our diversity. So we bring this all together and then we add water. And I want to add water in a way um, that is a blessing for you. And it's a simple blessing that I want to give you with a hug. With a hug and the words, I love you, water. As I look at you as water. And the simple blessing is a blessing of gratitude. That really, I'm not the only one who created. I'm sure there's many versions of this. But I practice this, and it's in honor of Dr. Masuro Emoto, who studied the crystalline structure of water. That when it was blessed or cursed, you could notice changes in the crystalline structures. And as it was taught to me, he would say, I love you, I thank you, I respect you. To every tiny molecule of water. And I add, I am you, you are me, and we are unity. So as I say this to you, I want you to feel the crystalline structure, the water molecules in your body moving, deepen into this liquidity. I love you. I thank you. I respect you. I am you. You are me, and we are unity. Vision the water in your bodies receiving that heartfelt message. Embracing yourself as water, not just physically, but feel it at all levels of your consciousness. You are water. You cannot change that. You cannot wish it away. You cannot really destroy it. It is who we all are. We are water beings. I want you to feel that water. I want you to envision that water in your body fully expressing who you are. And we think, I think we can all agree that without water in our immediate environment, our existence is pretty relative and all living species here on this planet would find it very challenging, if not impossible, to adapt and exist without water. This is something we take for granted these days. Water, we take it for granted. Many parts of the world are not taking it for granted now because there's a lack of water or 
the, the water that they have is polluted or not healthy. And yet still people have to go to that well every day and dip the water out because they have no other source. So when we look at the world, this beautiful blue marble in space, and we, what do we see? We see that water. We see water. That's what you see from outer space is the water. You don't see the trees. You don't, you see that blue color and that's the water. Amazing thing about planet earth is that between seven, from seven to 50% of the ocean water that is on this planet right now is older than the planet itself. Say that again, seven to 50% of the ocean water is older than our planet is. How can that be? One might ask. The water was originally formed in interstellar space as ice. Even before our sun was formed, which according to some scientists uh, are estimated at 4.6 billion years ago. 4.6 billion years ago. That's how old 7 to 50% of the water on this planet is. Now, think about that. How many shapes and forms, how many vegetables, how many beings has that water become in 4.6 billion years of existence? We are ancient water. We are ancient galactic water. You don't have to believe me. I encourage you to go look that up. I encourage you to investigate water in order to discover your liquidity, how precious you are in your liquid form and what that means to the diversity of everything on our planet. Because without that liquidity, there is no diversity. Everything just becomes a standstill process. It's the diversity of water that creates most of what we experience as pleasant and comforting. So I found a, an article titled Water Through Time, and this, which states that ices from parent molecular clouds are incorporated into planet forming disks around young stars and eventually into the planets themselves. So this is the process from our galactic perspective. The ice forms molecular clouds, it moves around through space and eventually travels around young stars and the young stars with the energy co-create planets. We're living on a water planet. You see scientists looking in space for water planets. This is not an idle passing. The saying, no water, no life, is not just a saying. It's the true reality of our existence. Clouds of living potential. Clouds of living potential. I love when I wrote that this morning. Clouds of living potential. Not just clouds in the sky, but you and I are clouds of living potential. 
that have clustered and moved through density and non-density to exist within most of what we call living species. And are even held fully contained within the crystalline structures we collect and adore. Here's one right here. Crystalline structures contain water. In the little opening, that's what I was talking to, the crystalline structure in you, blessing that crystalline structure in you. And I want you all to come away from this talk today with a completely different viewpoint of water. Not because I said so, but maybe your choice will be to prove me wrong. I challenge you to deepen your relationship to water. And I promise you that when you do, you will learn a new respect, not only for water, but you will learn a new respect for yourselves and each other. And this is where our liquidity and our diversity merge. So as we continue embracing the water today and its amazing abilities to be fluid, even in its icy form as it was in space. The primordial clouds have a message for us. So part of my journey in this world, in this lifetime, is to be a messenger. Today, I'm a messenger for the water. This week, when I discovered that I was going to do this, when I chose to do this, I listened to the water. And every morning, I would be awakened at 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning, and the water would communicate to me. And I would have visions of the water or what I was going to say or what I was going to talk about. And I knew that it, what was happening was really not going to all form today in this talk. But what it was was reconnecting me to the fact that I can communicate with water. And so can you. Each one of us have this ability to tap into any of the elements and communicate with them, not just water. But today, I'm here for water as Riverman, a name I was given 25 years ago. And I didn't have a clue that I would be doing any of this that I do today or ever had an imagination that I would be talking to all of you around the world expressing my love for water and encouraging you to do the same. Diversity needs structure. It needs structure to contain it. Many of us, if we look at our body, this is a structure. If we didn't have this structure, the water molecules in our body would not be contained. If you poke yourself, you will bleed. What is blood? Water. It's water that contains everything within you. When we bleed out, meaning we have no more blood, we no longer exist. Real simple. This isn't brain surgery. This is, this is just simple, simple addressing the fact that every cell in our body contains water. It's 99% in volume that contain, we contain in our body. Most people don't look at it in that respect of um, volume on a molecular level. 
and I may have that backwards, but it's as water beings, our physical body, and I'll read this, our physical body on a molecular level is 99% water. When we base it on volume of water contained in the body as a percentage of total volume compared to the number of molecules, which has been the standard for years, which estimates to 60 to 70% volume or percent water. So you see how we look at water and how we see water changes everything. That's what I'm here to do, is to get you to see water differently. And when we can recognize that water, that water volume within us, we are to envision our future as a living species we then have to embrace our liquidity. We cannot do anything without liquidity. And what was liquidity, but it was the ability to flow like water. And when we think about the flow of water, it will move around something, it will move over something. Even when we build dams, they leak or when it heavy rains, they'll run over, or they have to have spillways so that they don't flow over. This is the power of water. This is the power of each one of us, if we really tap into our liquidity and use it. Envisioning liquidity as a key to embrace our diversity. So here we are with diversity. Here we are with water. Water moves in many different ways. It moves as solid ice crystals in the multiverse, which is a, a very slow process. And so if we are to move as water right now with our diversity, it would be a very slow process. The chances are, as we all know, everything is speeding up and we might even be a little bit behind where we should be in our collective whole. So we need to, embrace diversity more rapidly and we need to become more fluid quickly because the rapid changes in the world are threatening all life forms because all life forms are based on water and we can no longer ignore or solve anything through separation anymore separation doesn't exist except as a figment of our imagination as a creation of this as I call it the original AI and I don't mean to lecture people I'm not really trying to do that I'm just trying to throw information out for you to think differently to become aware uh, more deeply of who you are on a water level. So we have trillions of water gathering in unity, <laughs> yet diversity to create a physical body as the vehicle and physical expression of our conscious awareness. So here's where our consciousness comes in and connects to the water. Everything in our body is connected through water and it's being expressed through the heart and the mind. So the question is, I'm going to move my notes up here. The question is, 
is how do we learn to access and utilize the water in both our hearts and our mind and get them to work together in unity rather than separation for the good of the greater whole, which means all life forms, not just humans, not just trees, not just alligators, not just worms, not just fish, not just flowers, not just vegetables, everything for the good of the greater whole. Sounds like I'm a dreamer, doesn't it? People will look at me all the time, yeah, you're crazy. I'm crazy in love. I'm crazy in love with the water in you. And I want you to be as crazy in love with the water in each other. Because if we take on the form of water as ice, like it does in the galaxy, our movement is going to be very, very, very slow. It's like the ice moving across the glaciers. How slow does that move? But when that water in the glaciers melts or turns into fluid or a gaseous state, which is diversity, it automatically becomes more adaptable to all the changes that it's confronted with. Water can flow over, under, it moves faster, it, it can get into crevices. Gas can move through spaces that are so tiny and create great strength of expansion. Look what happens within the earth when the, the water moves between the cracks and this is fracking. When we look at the whole process, what is this? This is water getting into places where nothing else can move and expanding. And I know that's a, many of us take that as a negative action, but it's taking water and using its diversity Let's use it not in a destructive way. Let's begin to use it collectively to uplift and empower each one of us as individuals and a collective consciousness. We become, through water, we become more responsive, we become more fluid, we're able to move on quicker. We don't carry as much baggage with us. We can accept new concepts better because this is a, the diversity of water. And this is the diversity of humanity. Although we've been unconscious for a long time, I think, as a collective. And this is what's happening now to 2020 and the next 10 years is going to be all about coming back together into a cohesive collective consciousness. And so I see solutions to the patterns of everyday life, which are now giving us so much concern. I see them being resolved with vigor and enthusiasm with more beneficial results for the planet and all life forms on the planet. And it leads me to think about the heart and mind of the collective humanity, as well its relationship to all life on Mother Earth, where we find and shall look for the heart and mind of Mother Earth and connect with that heart and mind as a collective whole, working together in a symbiotic relationship through the water. The water is the vehicle. 
And so now we end the show and talk. I'm, I'm, I did good. I got on time. Sometimes things amaze me. Because as you can see, I can talk for days. Uh, so I want you to notice how we can envision relationship and let go of differences and uh, have the water be that amazing connection we have with each other. Go to a pond, go to a river, bring a friend, sit there. What do you feel? What do you connect with? This is who you are. You're just seeing yourself in another form. And I want you to honor, love, and respect that water in whatever form it comes to you. And it's in remembering and accepting our abilities to embrace our liquidity that our collective envisioning changes everything. Just be the loving water that you truly are. With that, I'm complete. I'm whole. I love you. I thank you. I respect you. Uh, thank you, Seven Days of Rest, for this opportunity. Thank you for my family at Loving Waters for all of your loving care for the waters, uh, wherever you are around this planet. Tomorrow, on day seven, um, Loving Waters will be doing uh, a live Zoom uh, and inviting you all to come and join us. Um, celebrating nature's laws of harmony. So uh, that will be at, um, I believe, 6 p.m. Then I lose my notes somewhere. Okay, where it's somewhere, uh, blah, blah, blah. It will be time is 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific, 5 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can go directly to Loving Waters. And uh, I hope to see you then bring sacred water, poems, readings, Whatever you feel comfortable bringing and join with us as we celebrate not only the water, but as our evolution of consciousness. And with that, I'm complete and whole and love you very much and love every droplet of water in your physical and etheric beingness. Bye-bye. Thank you for being here.